It's the Don't Call Me White Girl Show. Hello, somebody needs a nappy. <laughs> it's me and Phelps and Dre live from the 2023. How's your new year going, ladies? Ooh, ooh. We're going to start this thing off right with a nail cam. How'd you want me to do a last episode, Dre? <laughs> just closer to the mic and just... <laughs> you like my nails? Yeah, they cool. They're a bit gaudy. It's not really my style, but they fly as shit. And they literally, she charged me three hundred eighty-five dollars for these. Mm. Yeah, worth every penny. These Different. are actual Schwartzy crystals, and the nail oil shoes for my cuticles comes from Jerusalem. Mm. Do you believe any of that? You're a dummy. Shout out to Ari. My nails really are cute, though. These are more disco ballish. I love when I make y'all talk about whole shit. Um, Phelps, how you doing? How you been? You look good. You look amazing. Amaze balls. Thank you. I'm chill. I'm just tired. You look pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my nigga Pop. Phelps has Pops. Who do you want? Yeah, yeah. This Pop um, shit. Pop cracked a shot at me because when I went on Joe Button, I don't know if you all saw that clip. Did y'all watch me on Joe Button's podcast? No. Is it because it was 50 bucks? Yeah, I was there. Wow. Excuse. Boy, you're the best excuse maker now. <laughs> Yours? Huh? Why haven't you watched Don't Call Me White Girl Meets Joe Button, Ice and Ish, I'm gonna watch and it. Parks? No, I had a good time. People watched it. Joe Button did put it on his Patreon because he's a fucking genius. I didn't know they referred to him as the pod god. He's been at this podcast shit for a long time. Very, very long time. Mm -hmm. Woo woo. This is like, no, but Tag Stone's first, correct? Some people won't even know Tag he Stone's made music. The original, huh? Some people won't even know he made music. Pump, 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 pump it up. What? I don't know. Joe Button can rap really well. I remember all the good lyricists by name. You know what I mean? Joe Biden was one of them. Joe Biden can rap, rap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I had a good time. You would think me and Joey know. That's what I call him, my friend. <laughs> you would think me and Joey knew each other for a long time. People were really pissed about the Patreon, but I saw a lot of you paid for it. Smart. Um, and I had a good time. Um, what, why did I bring up the, bot, the Joe Biden podcast? It was the whole point of that. <laughs> What's my name? I was smoking weed, too. I don't know. You Fuck. talked about Pops hoodie. That, Thank yeah. you, yeah, the sober yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, but on the podcast we start talking about black brands and Joe. I um, didn't see that clip. <laughs> doesn't it funny, Joseph? I don't care if it's black. I don't, you know, that's it. How's the quality? Is it nice? And oh. so many people were pissed in the comments, right? But I'm gonna say this: what a lot of people were saying, where what a few people were saying was stuff like. Just because it's a black business doesn't make it a bad business. Just just like just because it's a white business doesn't make it a good business. Mm -hmm. But that's not what the fuck we were talking about. What we were talking about is how a lot of the black urban clothing brands are just shitty. You know what I mean? Um, there, as far as creativity, quality, name. Um, and the thing is, they they similar in their wackiness. That's the thing. It's yeah, the like, similarity. Yeah, yeah. I have two issues with those. What? Number one is that a lot of people say they have clothing lines, but they're just t shirt brands. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're not actually like the t tag and label isn't theirs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And that's, if that's your grind, that's your grind. But it's different than a clothing line having different articles of clothing. And number two is that when you are like an entrepreneur or you have a business, like I hate the whole like just pushing your family and friends to buy stuff. Like it's yeah. like, if you really want to be successful at a business, you're going to have to create a market outside of your, your fin Cheers. friends and Cheers. family. Folks, yeah. If you really want to do this like full time. Unless you, you make it family reunion merch, nigga. <laughs> 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 Everybody got a uh, truck and sweatshirts yeah. on at the van. You know what I mean? Cause you got this X plus the stuff. This is my thing. I remember when Milano first started, you mm -hmm. familiar with Milano? 
Milano it was a t-shirt brand. I remember it went Philly right, viral because somebody bought a shirt screenshot the Gildan tag and it went crazy. And they was like trying to drag her or whatever. I watched her quality get better. I watched her shit get bigger. Um, I think she always had like fly shit, but it definitely got like, I mean, mm -hmm. you walked. I just saw a girl walk past me with a peak coat on nice and shit. Little small Milano emblem on it. Real fly. So I think that those t-shirt brands have potential to grow into like full brands or whatever but i think for the most part a lot of people are starting these businesses with no direction yeah. so they don't really know what they want to do all they do is get this name and when we talk about the names the names me and phelps what we was just i mean the names are they're just yeah. terrible and some of them are so negative struggle <laughs> pain sorrow Man, get you, a <laughs> get you a sweatsuit. Get you a with the sorrow socks to match, man. You know, pain is not pleasure. Then in the back, but it's hustle though. Like, you know what I mean? Hustle nomics, all of them. It's a lot with y'all. This is the thing. I am a person that is trying to choose black. I do come from an era where it was none. Mm -hmm. I grew up, what did we have? Carl Kanai. We had Fubu, which was crazy for a long time. Um what else? It's they, a couple others. They was directed towards us, but we don't know if we owned them all. You see what I'm saying? We uh, had Rockaware, Sean John, Woo Wear. Rockaware, like, Woo, the rappers Woo Wear. Gave us Woo stuff. Wear was huge. And that's the thing. Yeah. Woo Wear might not have been huge in the hood, but Woo Wear, Woo Wear yeah. had a global effect. Yeah. Where them niggas was making big money because of China. People in China. Yeah, yeah, that's, was, that was they it. They was copying it, yeah. Um, I feel like... What do you yeah. think about when people say that some people argue that segregation was a good thing for black people to the sense to where <laughs> they <laughs> hold on I'm just saying to the sense to where all the businesses that you consumed yeah, and that you spent, you, you spent yeah. at were all black you, the banks were black the stores were black the everything yeah. that you went to was that, black that can make sense as long as our, we getting the same amount of resources yeah. they flush out the resources and kick us to the side no fuck no you feel me this is the thing I don't know if your ringer's off um me personally, when I look and um, read and see some of those towns, because a lot of those towns mm -hmm. were just destroyed by terrorists. Like mm -hmm. Tulsa. Yeah, like Tulsa, because it wasn't just one Tulsa in, in the yeah. country or whatever. That like black utopia to me is totally possible. And it's a, it's a great thing. Now, as far as now, it just don't seem that realistic. And then the races are so blended. So many, your wife's biracial. So many people are, are technically, allegedly, no, I think it might be a fact that white people will be going soon because they mixed up so much. Y'all know that? They're, I, they're yeah, starting yeah, to I become the that. minority. Yeah. I believe and, that. And That's why they're going to die off because they're so they're so mixed. You know what I mean? Wouldn't that be something? But that's, listen, there's <laughs> some people that believe, and please don't kill me, y'all. This is a fact. I'm saying some people that believe, but it might be a fact. Some people, I know, I know for a fact that there is a group of white people that are on this whole, like, Aryan and keep it pure because of that. That's sure. what they're fighting against, you know, because they want to keep their race yeah, white. The whole world around. gonna be beige in probably two hundred years. You got to keep your daughters off the black meat. <laughs> Why is that simple? <laughs> it's bad. That's bad karma. Once you get a taste of that chocolate, it will be waiting for chocolate. Phelps boy on the other side of it. He's gonna eat all you your said food. What? Umar, he want he want you to stay within the oh, race. Nah, honestly, man, listen, f for real, for real. Like when they come to that love shit, it's about what's in your heart. You feel me? Do what makes you happy. You understand? It's just in certain situations with uh with the black and white thing, it just look funny sometimes. Like you gonna like when when black men when we get money, you feel me? With like. It's just it's just too common. Like it just you know. Would you ever date a white woman? I ain't never date nobody. <laughs> okay. Technically, I never. I well, yeah, I have, but <laughs> they got no. There's no discrimination. People. Phelps has never had a girlfriend. Never. Not one. Not like, not like technically. He's not. been number one side nigga, like the first nigga that she called. You know, when she gets a little time off, a thousand times. Yeah. So you ain't never brought a joint home. He's never in what, had a in girlfriend. In what fashion? Me like, this is my shawty. Like, this is my that's girl. Me. That's me. He did that to me. Because I he brought me to Thanksgiving. <laughs> then you be. Yeah. Last Thanksgiving, I did go. Yes. Hey. Shout but, out to the stepmom. What's my girl name? Uh, Tisa. Hey, Tisa. 
<laughs> hey, girly. It's my baby. It's me. See me now? <laughs> <laughs> um, y'all fucked this all the way up. Um, you, DeAndre, could you have married a white woman, you think? I don't know. I dated, I went to a PWI course and I didn't, wasn't official with a white girl, but I talked to a what white girl. What the fuck is a PWI course? A PWI college. So it's a predominantly white institution. Oh, God damn. You know, cut that out. I don't know. <laughs> you know, we both went to a PWI. We both went to a PWI. Okay. Um, from a just PWI. a regular college. I'm know. from America. <laughs> so I did talk to a white girl like exclusively. She never met my parents or nothing like that. But I don't she know. She was your number one whore. Possibly. But it's just the cultural differences are just, it's, it's just. It's just a lot of cultural differences. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, it's like. they don't wash. <laughs> I mean, it's like they grew up, like you may, have, as a white person, grew up listening to the Beatles or something like mm -hmm. that. Like, I ain't listened to the Beatles. My parents ain't listened to the Beatles. Yeah. I don't know. No. Be I think that's tiny. I think the more cultural yeah, differences no, are I'm like just hygiene. saying that that's. <laughs> I'm just saying that's indicative of a larger just cultural, yeah, okay. like. For me, it's just, it's, it's just historically that shit is just not. It's just not in me to just procreate with. And with I just love women, black women. Yeah. yeah, that's. I the mean, I feel line. like I, it's so crazy. I stumbled across this comedian's page, and he was madly in love with his white girl, and they seemed so in love. And she was really yeah, like, do what she was happen. like, but she was like that white girl that you bring home that people will love. You know what I mean? Yeah. She was that white girl, like tie dye, smoke blunts. Whitey, whitey, not too. It's people that's, you know what I mean? This is my thing. My complexion. Some people would think I was white. And Rashad's father was really, really dark skinned. Yo, the looks niggas used to give us, like, <laughs> you know, because some people, I guess, are against that. Some people don't have that inner, you know, they don't, they just don't like it. It's so crazy that you walk through the mall with a white woman or you walk through the white wall with a white woman, the way they're going to look at you, but. If a black woman like me was to post my white guy, they'd be in the comments like, yes. Yeah. Yes. But I'm you, here for a girl. Yes. Opening your horizons, girl. Yes. But co signer. Yes. Exactly. See, that's what I was going to say. I feel like from y'all and y'all attaching it to success, not necessarily like it's something that you always wanted. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't run through the, all of the middle of the niggas. Matthew McConaughey, you get this pussy. And that doesn't have anything to do with nothing. No, I'm not saying y'all don't like or have y'all crushes, but you know what I'm saying? I love Lincoln. I think for women, when it comes to, oh, if you woman. date a white man, it's more like, like they see Lincoln. like you leveling up to a certain extent. But with dudes, it's more like, they feel like you're getting taken advantage oh, of man. or like they trying to like a white girl's trying to get something out of you. Like I know my grandmother used to, you know, God bless her soul, but she South Carolina old school. It's like if I told her I was dating a white girl or something like that, she would always she would say something that would be like proceed with caution just because it's just that mindset of like they trying to get something up out of you or mm. be careful because they might lie on you or something like it's that. Just white that girl mindset. gonna see you. You can do police. what you do, but like and I don't have a problem with like white people just being to they on a white shit minus racism. You yeah. feel me? Like white people, you. you can learn shit from them to a lot of. They introduce us to a lot of learn shit. What? So it's like, huh? Learn what, nigga? How to catch a toad? My first time having a bonfire was in college. I ain't never do that. Ain't nobody around me in my neighborhood. Ugly have a sweater fire parties, pit. niggas ain't invent that. I've been tired of them for years because I've been doing like this since college. Friendsgivings, that was white shit in college white as well. I was doing that in Cosmo. I don't Beer do that pong. shit no more. All that shit. I seen people play beer pong with Percocet. They they drinking. <laughs> they drinking. On Twitter, I saw that. They drinking in day parties. I started to do, doing white that with people. white people in college. White people. So it's like. Look at y'all trying to be white. No, um, I would never imagine I would date a black guy. I would never imagine none of that. But right now, if I met a white guy, guy he, excuse me, I never imagine I would date outside of black men. Oh, I really am a lover of black men. Y'all know that. Sometimes y'all call me a pick me. Um, but right now, I don't give a fuck what he look like. If he, if the vibe is cool, you get there. And I don't even, I, right now, if the vibe is there, and you got ovaries, I'm fucking with you. No cat. For some I mean, cat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wherever your heart carry you, my heart call just. Call me. <laughs> I'm fucking. It's 2023. My heart got a, uh. Got a history reel attached to it, so I can't. You know yeah, no, really. And you know what I used to say? I don't see anything wrong with interracial dating, but I bet you when she get mad, she calls him a 
hard R. You know what I mean? Oh, whatever, Ronald, you dirty. Remember the um the porn star sex sex picture taker? I don't know the appropriate names. She had an OnlyFans. She stabbed up her nigga in Miami. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, now they're releasing tapes of her like just booping his ass in the elevator. Yeah, see, that should be weird. Though. Yeah, that should be weird. Um, I don't know. Like, oh. listen, now this is how you get him. My son. If my son was to bring home a white girl, how would I feel? I'm going to blow your minds right now. I would be more mad if he brought home a white girl than if he brought home a boy. Really? Damn. I used to say that. Yeah, I used to say that. How do I feel today? Um, Let's make that clear. She used to say that. Yeah, I used to say that. I used to say that. For years, I would say that. Like, And this was after he was born. His father would be like, what the fuck? Um, but no, right now... I don't care who they bring home. I just whoever can make them really happy yeah. and protects them and loves them. Like when you see love or when you come across it and you can feel it, it's really a nice, a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I just saw a clip with these people that were married for 42 years and the husband had um cancer and it, both of them had cancer, but the husband's cancer was kicking his ass. And his wife, both of them being both of them sick and both of them chemo, she thought he forgot. He walks in with roses and they both just cry, you know. Like, shit like that is nice. Yeah, no. Nah, oh, yeah, it, I it saw was, that. That was heart, yeah, heartwarming. Good situations exist, but. That's great. I love love. That's for y'all. Like, uh, what? No, nah, go ahead. No, what did you say? That's for the people that do it. Babe, we don't, we not in together for 20 years. We not interracial. We, we oh, niggas. You back on the interracial shit. I was on the black people that had cancer, babe. Oh, you know. I thought I thought they was interracial. When I and then when you think about interracial relationships in general, it's like it's a difference of your son bringing home a Latin girl, a Spanish girl, an Asian girl. It's not the same. It's the white girl. That's like even Asian though. That's that's almost just because it's the history real. We, you know, I, we especially our dealings in the urban setting. Man, what? You know what I watch? I read. And we know, we don't know what they call their grannies, but the Asian grandma, I'm definitely not fucking with. Come on. We just um, know. Like, we don't got to fight it. Okay. Now, I've kind of seen like that West Coast, Cambodian kind of from the hood. They're totally different. Yeah. They're totally different. Just like in North Philly in the Logan area, those Cambodians or the South Philly Cambodians. Yeah, we're totally not different. Them. Yeah. Not, now, because you had that conversation, I follow, I ended up following on social media and a couple other platforms, some Asian activists. I got really into Asian activism during COVID because they were really getting fucked with, mm -hmm. you know, um, due to the president being a, a, you know, a bully or somebody that was so depressed. That's why I hate when y'all say I miss Trump. We need Trump back. He was so dangerous in the terms of like being free with his words. Mm -hmm. The platform I have makes me think about what I say now way more than I ever have way more. Um, compared to year one or whatever. So imagine being a fucking president and legit going out there and saying whatever you want. That's dangerous as fuck. You know, you put that, he put a certain tension in the air. I still don't think it's even went away. You know, mm -hmm. the benefit of some of it is you never really knew. You could be like me and Phelps and think, oh, you white people are racist. <laughs> That's a joke. I don't think that. Um, But with the Donald Trump thing, you pretty much, they kind of came out the closet because now he's a Trumper, he's a racist, period. It was, it's, there's no way that a white person that I knew of that supported Donald Trump, that it didn't give me that impression that you're a racist because Donald Trump's a racist and he's open, blatant with his shit. You know what I mean? Um, that, like, Asian, I mean, I'm talking about, when I say I was watching things happen, Asian people, I would watch 80-year-olds with carts get kicked in the back clothesline stomped out mm -hmm. for no other reason but you bored COVID here die fuck you COVID you did it whatever whatever and um, it was refreshing to see Asian activism because it was a need for it but the first thing I thought about was like that terrible relation that black and Asians have in the hood all over the country 
it got so real with me that in right now it's a huge, huge amount of like black nail techs, but it hasn't always been. Mm -hmm. It hasn't always been a bunch of choices for you to choose from. My grandmother went to a black nail tech who was her best friend and it was 45 minutes from her house. It was a big thing when she would go get her nails done there. Um, Monica, um, but it was rare. It was a rarity when you could walk two blocks in the neighborhood and end up in the Asian salon. It's going to do it real fast. Mm. It's cheap. It was cheap back then. We would get full sets for $15. Y'all probably don't understand that, but that's the difference of something that's a basis of $100 now. And um, you'll be in and out of there. And it was like a popping place to be. North fully ends. Like some of these nail salons was like, you know, the who's who. But nastiness just filled with fucking nastiness so many different things has happened in that like coming to get service as far as nails coming to get food you know what i mean um shopping at convenience stores that famous scene in minister society where um kane and um old dog are shopping and they rushing them hurry up and buy mm-hmm. and he's so irritated he ends up killing both of these motherfuckers and robbing the start of that scene is them being harassed by them mm-hmm. and follow right a lot of people probably don't know this but that is a not like a kickoff or it's almost like an homage to what happened to that 15 year old girl on the West Coast who's shopping. I think she stole the orange juice. The Asian shop owner shoots her in her back and she was like 14 or something like that. Y'all familiar with that story? Yeah, it was a huge thing in the early 90s. This was after like okay. the riots and shit. It was just a lot going on. But my experience still to this day is when I am dealing with a person of Asian descent. It has happened more than once where I felt like this person don't give a fuck about my money or me. No, I'm saying that wrong. This person only gives a fuck about my money. money. They don't give a fuck about me. I mean, literally, I would envision bucket of chicken wings falling on the ground, scraping them up, just putting them back. And it's not really for nothing to save money or over the fact that I hate these motherfuckers around here. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I witness a lot of people just being people will come into the store and order like this, you know, like emulating the mm-hmm. accent or whatever. I mean, of course it's wrong, but it's like, if you're from the hood and you've never felt that kind of like discriminatory type of, I don't like you niggas vibe from an Asian person, I don't know what, what hood you from. Cause that's been my experience. Now, how do you talk about that or start that conversation without it turning into racism or bullying? I can't even think of the word is it's a word for like Asian hate. I can't remember what it is. And it's a guy who used to rap. And you probably know what I'm talking about. China Mac. China fucking Mac. I follow China Mac. Um, when I first saw him, he started getting my nerves a little bit with like the damn stars and wrestling. And then he fought the nigga from No Jumper. There's a lot going on with this nigga. But I liked him from day one. First of all, he could rap his ass off. Nigga from the hood did Tommy Rikers. One tooth, leather Aaron Rex with the fur hoodie. This is a hard ass Asian rapping nigga from New York. <laughs> Um, I think he's from Brooklyn, or I don't want to. I don't want to say where he's from. I don't. I'm just kind of familiar with him. I don't know a lot about him. But he was in Asian activism, and I feel like that's the nigga that needs to do it. Somebody on some tough shit. You know what I'm saying? Because he definitely has like that tough persona. He gives me the vibe that he'll kick a nigga ass. Um, it's China Mac from. I need to know. So he'd be the Asian representative. He's from Brooklyn, like I. It had to be something. Um, what'd you say? He, he would be the Asian representative for what? This nigga was literally putting together full marches, and they gonna be small and they get bigger. I'm here for it, bro. Standing up for yourselves, and it was like that. Yo, that shit was bad. You didn't ever saw that them kicking old ladies and the old Asian ladies in the back is insane. What black person could represent us today? Me. I vote for Keith Murray. <laughs> I've been wanting to talk about Keith Murray for a while. Um, I I want us to pick him up do an intervention. Where's Eric Sermon? Like somebody give him a Xanax for y'all film. Why are y'all in this nigga? Full out smoke a whole blunt of that shit, and then y'all recording him. Why are we doing that to the legends? Keith Murray is and a legend. And the crazy thing is, his fucking fitted hat was so big. Everything he could put big. two fists in it. <laughs> that cocaine is shrinking his motherfucking Yo, he, don't, he don't got nobody to just. This all he got had somebody just to do this one time. 
<laughs> this nigga had a fucking trench coat with a polo under it with a size eight and a half fitted cap. You Big could fitted. put this in his hat. Big his fitted. head is the size of a little Eminem, no nut. You know what we're talking about? Yeah, I saw that one clip where he was talking about doing something with a celebrity. Eating. Yeah. Showing his vagina. <laughs> What's your what, fantasy? <laughs> what is it with the old niggas telling about these sexual like yo? Where there is players don't do that. You don't tell on people when you fuck them, even when it's twenty years later. Nah, it's it, yeah, you don't. It's it's they corny niggas, and it's like you could kind of just tell. Like, all right, you was definitely you feel me. You was coked out. Herb got it. We know you was coked out, nigga. You named yourself after the the fucking Spanish mob. You know you was doing cocaine. You oh, God, he disgusted me with the shiny shit. Keith like, Murray, there's Keith no, Murray, no, smoke. There's nothing. No, well, I don't. First of all, what I said about Irv because he 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 gonna do his thing, but I don't want to. Allegedly, Keith Murray is from the era where niggas smoked a lot of dust. You feel me? Like just Phelps, a, original put dust. Put that heads. on social media that he's an old school dust smoker, and he probably is. And in Philadelphia, or a lot of hoods they call wet black crack. In my head, when we had the PCP conversation, you were going to automatically know what PCP is because you're from D.C. And that's where PCP comes from. Shout out to D.C., baby. Love, bo. It'll be waiting for you. But I ain't going to lie, though. Waka, like, waka, waka, die. Two for one. Park, 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 wet. We got a lot of great um, rappers and raps off um, wet. So, I mean, bring it back to the booth, if anything. I'm from a wet block. I'm from Sheridan Street. Badly, niggas could listen. Water, water, water. You be driving your car, and while you riding by, they go walk a dog, walk a dog, walk a dog. You can know the way is here. Bring some, di- bring <laughs> some, di- up, motherfucker. Bring some dippers to your, as your favorite rapper studio session, especially if you had a nigga that already smoked tobacco anyway. Just be like, here, bro, just hit this couple times, go in the booth. Let's explain some of these drugs. Number one, ding, you have dippers. Dippers is where you take a a cigarette, preferably menthol, Newport. You dip it in. um PCP, the liquid mm-hmm. clear. You dump it in there real quick. Puff it to bring the oil down. Rub that thing down. How I know all that? Saw a documentary. <laughs> Saw a doc. If you believe that, you're as dumb as you look. Light the cigarette. It blows up a little bit. Puff, puff, puff. You're now dusted, baby. Next, you have mint leaves. A little PCP on them. They freeze it. Jar it up. Sell them things. People will roll that up. Sometimes they would take from where Dre's from, his neighborhood, they would take marijuana and then put the soaked in PCP dried out mint leaves over top. That is a love boat. Beanie Siegel rapped about that in 2000. (laughs) Good job. Um, I always say my age, it wasn't strange if you was in like a cypher. I'm 15 and hmm, that butt smell a little funny. Is wedded. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa now. Not me. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna turn this down. Um, it's a hallucinogen. People stay up all the time. They call it black crack because it's similarities. You lose weight, mm-hmm. you don't go to sleep, you act a little crazy. When I say I'm from North Philly from the wet block, I'm talking you walking through a block and this person is playing tennis with nobody, this person is swimming. On the steps, everybody is in their own some, little listen, la la man, land. Some, some woo, woo. angel dust, PCP, some, some of my favorite, my favorite, some of my favorite Love reps both. ever have come from. I just know, like especially the order you get, you you be like, oh, I, like you feel me? Me and Phelps are not against drugs. We don't even judge you. You do what you do, baby. I just went to an event the other night and all the VIP was snorting out their mind. I ain't say nothing. <laughs> I said, what's up, y'all? Everybody was like, what's up? I want to say something right now, but I ain't going to do that. Niggas was hot up last night. Woo woo. It's, it's mad rappers that I People would call out, I but I'm not going to do that because I love we? them. But why no. would we do that? No, no, no. I mean, first of all, to call people out was when you have a piece of judge, judgment. Yeah, a motherfucker yeah, yeah, yeah. that just judge. You know who could judge us about drugs? Dre. Because Dre <laughs> is the most sober motherfucker in America. We can't talk about no goddamn drugs. I still don't judge nobody. Dre don't judge, But though. you could because you don't 
fuck with it. You know, yeah. I hate the motherfuckers that are secretly addicted to shit. And then they come on their high horse talking shit. Yeah. It's always the motherfucker that talks shit about people being on drugs that comes out five years later. My battle with da, 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 that nobody knew. I love computer cleaner. I used to get three cans in the morning too. And you always addicted to some old strange shit. But you was talking about motherfuckers because they was doing whatever drug that is perceivably wrong at the time. You know what I mean? Because there's always these waves of drugs and they come out talking about it. You know, because that's how it is now with the lean and the Percocets and the this and the that. But you know what never went through that which is strange because everybody was on them. Right. I just watched the BMF documentary. Oh, it was so good. You need to watch it. I watched so many documentaries about BMF. I thought I was totally tired of it. Do I watch 50 show? No. Do I appreciate what 50 is doing? Yes, because he's fucking smart for doing it. I thought it was an old story. I was kind of tired of hearing it. I felt the same way about snowfall because i heard rick ross story in every way you can hear it you know but i will say um i never did watch snowfall but i will say that the things that i hear about bmf the show in the bmf documentary that 50 was involved it was good as a motherfucker like it was good like it felt like you were there i brought that time up because back then everybody was on ecstasy yeah. i don't give a fuck what you say i don't give a fuck what you do everybody Early 2000s, was, right yeah okay we talking like Jay -Z? Not even early, bro. I'm talking like 05, 04, because that's probably you on your way out of high school, right? To about. I, I ain't get out of high school to 07, 08. Right, that's what I'm saying. So ecstasy was kind of like starting to fade a little bit. It was around, but it wasn't. No, babe. That's what I'm saying to you. The times I'm talking about is 04, 05, 06. Okay. So you're on your way out of high school. Yeah. I'm already out of high school. I'm 18, 19. He was every yo everywhere yeah, every rapper yeah. every you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. I'm talking about big T-shirt rap era. Yeah, yeah, right. So and even now it's still a thing, but it's just not. Remember we had the conversation about back in the day people would sell you an E pill with the um not us because we've never <laughs> like come on, but people would sell you an E pill and it'd be one stack, double stack, triple stack, and it would be like their choice and it'd be like a five dollar difference. Now they just got E. Listen, it's a lot of classic verses. I'm gonna say it again from the early two thousands. Where your favorite rappers are rapping openly about being on doing ecstasy. <laughs> like it's I mean, it's every <laughs> fuck rap, rock, every listen, this I don't even drugs talk about them. We know that. Are in I'm sorry, excuse me, Omar. I mean both. Um drugs are just I think music and drugs or music. Drugs and being creative go hand in hand, period. You have some drugs where people have used them clinically. Ecstasy is one. Acid is one where a therapist is giving this to a couple mm -hmm. to get them to open up and talk or whatever. I used to say, actually, one of them drugs, you have to try it. Like, before you die, you have to try it one time. Absolutely. Like, it's, bro, you have a whole day, boy. Whole day. Like, man. ride a ride all day, you know what I mean? Don't. Imagine the wind blowing and a leaf hitting you, and it just feels amazing. Whoa. See, Mona then had the bullshit ass street pills. I had a couple of them. That ain't nothing, but that's some bullshit. If you get something real, it don't. I don't know what she talking about. What would I say was bullshit? How all day? No, it's not like. Oh no! Just when I took ecstasy all day. No, no jokes. All jokes aside, when I took ecstasy, the first couple times I took it, I was high for twenty four hours. No cat. Like I literally couldn't sleep and woke back up. You saying eat don't last that long? Yeah, I was not for me. Even when I was real, real high, it didn't last for 24 hours. Yeah, uh, that ain't no bullshit. If anything, I'm getting stronger. Ease. It ain't coke. I had motherfucking e pills, but that's what I was trying to say to you. So maybe you missed that wave, bro. When they sold triple stacks, it was literally thicker. You feel me? Yeah. So the one stack of might look like a pill that you would get out of like a pharmacy. The double stack is like, but yo, the triple stacks are peasants, nigga. See, you not, feel me? Remember peasants? Yeah, Flintstones? I'm going This is the whole thing. You always gotta try to put somebody down on I'm bullshit. Not, what the fuck is you talking? No, that's exactly what the fuck he did. Oh, she on bullshit street drugs. Nigga, where the fuck, where the fuck is you at? A lab? No. We both getting the same bullshit ecstasy. I'm not saying that, but Motherfucker. this the thing. I done cut this is this is what I'm trying to tell you. I done got some shit from Tony and then I done got some shit from, from Raheem. No, 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 no. From uh, Svetlana. You feel me? Svetlana uh, got the real, you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Racist. I'm talking about back in these times. Doom, doom. I know. Mm -mm. Get it, Dre? Okay, whatever. Either way, um, uh, yeah. So the BMF shit, people were so eat out, but it never, that's what my point was. I don't remember it being a thing like with E's were so bad. Mm -hmm. Like how it is now with, with yeah. they talk about this and talk about that. Because even we, we has had bad press for the last billions of years. Yeah. Like they put movies out about back in the day about how horrible we was and what we would do to you. And we don't really do nothing to you. We make you hungry and sleepy. Yeah, it has nothing to do with weed. 
It's about money, right? Well, money and then two ways that they can try Tax black it. people. Oh, yeah, yeah, lock black people up. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. uh-huh. They always trying to fuck with us, motherfuckers. Um, we did talk about on the show how popular shrooms got, remember? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just funny when you think that alcohol was illegal at one time. And look at it now, you don't even think about it. Because they can tax it. Although, alcohol was illegal at one time. Still, now today, alcohol is the only drug that you can die from withdrawal. Only one. All those other drugs, you might get complications. You're addicted to, um, not a barbiturate. You do to like a Xanax, right? Anti-anxiety pill. That withdrawal may cause seizures. A seizure, a bad seizure might kill you. Alcohol. If you are addicted to alcohol, and I'm talking about alcohol to the point you don't have it and you shaking, you will die from withdrawal. When you say to a doctor or to a hospital or you in an ambulance or whatever, you say, yo, I'm withdrawing off alcohol, you're automatically put into a detox because you have to be Observe why you detox off that. It's the number one killer of motherfuckers because of drunk driving incidents. I think it's the one of the biggest um when people are pregnant and they're having babies with issues, it's one of the biggest reasons why, like alcohol fetal syndrome and shit like that. And it's not illegal. And it's not illegal. Now I've heard a lot of people talk about if you made drugs legal, especially the ones that people consume just normally, the quality will probably be better because it's regulated, safer. It's safer. State of Washington, they made a More bunch of that stuff legal, didn't they? Like crack, heroin, all that, didn't they? They made That's, heroin illegal? Illegal? Nah, nah. You could. It's it's at least a couple places in America where they made some of that type of shit like legal. Or or recreational, I don't want to say legal. Legal recreation, not the same thing. Shit, right now we is only legal on a federal level not state level in every state so that's why you have people that still go to prison for it mm-hmm. black people because white people with their little dispensaries they're not going through the same issues it's a long confusing story um i thought i would i would assume we would have been legal by now just because there's so many benefits from it now i mean you got people pulling out the shit that's actually giving it to two-year-olds to stop them from having seizures you know it's a lot of benefits from um that plant but um in general I, my, my mother never did drugs, nothing, never smoked, never nothing. And she was always very liberal about that. And the funny thing about alcohol is the whole prohibition era, That's that breeds these gangsters and all this violence mm-hmm. and all this, you know, this ghetto shit. And some of the richest families in the country, that's what they're built off. Mm-hmm. They're built off that illegal dope money. It's dope money. It's the same exact thing. You watching something like BMF, Watching um the story about Meech, this last documentary, what was interesting about him is he really was like a nice guy. He's one of them drug dealers that didn't kill people on call to get people killed. He didn't have that big situation. He was real big on trying to change your life. So when you come in to the crew and then you family, because it's the black mafia family, but then you family your kids in private school. You have a certain kind of house. You drive a certain kind of car. You know what I mean? Um, It's just crazy. It just always feels to me like, it's just something about niggas getting that piece of the pie that the others they just don't want it to, to be done. You know, my issue is, is that I feel like crimes, because then it's a debate of whether it's victimless, but <clears throat> violence free crimes like that. There's no reason why a nigga like that should have that amount of time. Mm. He'll come home 2029, which is, I think, him doing 33 years in prison. So, That's crazy. They watched him for so long. And you know what? They they could not find him with drugs, Dre. I'm talking about watching this nigga for over a year, years. And all they seeing him do is having these extravagant parties and just living this yeah. like rock star star lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? I remember watching one documentary years ago where one of the arrested fat guys was like, do you know how it felt driving into Atlanta looking at their billboard? BMF, the world is ours. It's a lot of envy in that yeah. shit. Remember that scene from that movie? And goddamn, and I'm a th- I think it's the Wolf of Wall Street where the, um he welcomes them on his yacht, and then he offers them money because he already know he going to jail at the time mm-hmm. he's sweating or whatever. And then um they show the cop like riding to work on the subway, and then you go to the you know what I mean? You go to the water in the middle of the city, and this nigga's getting on his yacht mm-hmm. in the middle of the day. It's envy with that. It's a lot of envy involved. Um, I think it's a disgrace that people that so drugs especially the cocaine kind of era thing to be sitting in jail for that long amount of time they get less time i mean less they get more time than people that kill do white collar crimes with that that involve more money being um for sure 
Mm -hmm. Half of the people that caused the recession didn't even go to jail. Yeah. So no, not half. Most of the people that were a part of that, because I did watch. It's all rolling together. I did watch the Bernie Madoff documentary. Dre, I watched it three fucking times, three times. I seen it. I mean, I didn't watch it, but when I seen the preview, I was like, "Yeah, I get it." It's very good, though. You would think it's tired of it because, like, you kind of know the story very good. It's not that they they tell you what happened in the preview. They was like, "Oh, you thought it was just him," so I'm like, "All right, now I know it's a whole bunch of people." Like, now I got to sit here and watch. Like, he kind of just told watch me. It, it really wasn't a much you watch it. Trust me. You're Anytime like there's it. like a big thing that happens, though, they try to take somebody and make an example. Right. That's yeah. why those people get 30 years because they're trying to clean up the streets so they feel like they get the top person and make an example that they'll stop everybody else on a lower mm -hmm. level. Yeah. Or I make will. them think twice about it. I will say that the older documentaries and the reason, because I'm somebody, I'm like, I'm not going to keep watching this shit. Shit, it get popular. Central Park Five. I've watched so many documentaries about that, read so much about that, and then boom, they do Netflix movie, right? Because I don't want to watch it. I already know the fucking story is terrible. It was um, really good, though. Huh? It was really good. My ex used to watch that shit like over and over. It was just strange. It made me very sad. The slow one. Remember the one that had a little mental issue? He couldn't. Corey. Oh, I hated Corey's story. It made me so sad. Some of that shit is just too much to bear. I think some of the jail traumatized me because my father went to jail so so young. So when I see people go to jail, my friends go to jail. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause I ain't done. <laughs> I don't like something on the reason. Let me see what else. Mm. No, we got we got money to get. Just know my heart was so broken. <laughs> I couldn't even make it. Did you read my text? Yeah. I was texting you. Yeah. My baby look good. You see him? <laughs> That's my man. Anyway, um, yeah, but um, watch it though. I'm telling y'all to watch a couple of different things. I'm telling you to watch the BMF documentary because it was really good. Free Michi. Can I publicly say that? Free Demetrius. Free Meech. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I just like he just I he just he was a he's a good nigga, man. He's mm -hmm. a good nigga. Uh, it was really cool. He's really excited and proud of his son. Um, Meech always had dreams of getting into the music industry. Their father was a musician that didn't really make any money. Mm -hmm. They grew up really, really poor, holes in their shoes. Yeah. Um, in Detroit, after the auto, um, the auto world, as far as like those jobs, like yeah. Detroit, Detroit was ruined by that yeah. and some of the riots or whatever. That's when they moved to Detroit, where they lived in Detroit. Um, them niggas really started hustling at like 14, 15 and grinded up. And was, I mean, they were millionaires, I think by 17. Um, and then they just took their shit, you know, kind of all across the country or whatever. Um, but the story was crazy. Um, it's a lot of stuff I didn't know. I didn't know Meech was the older brother. Um, yeah. I always assumed Terry was the older brother. Um, I definitely didn't know how long they was getting money like that. I thought that the big thing was Atlanta, but them niggas was big on a big scale mm -hmm. from um, Detroit. Um, and just Meech just being a good nigga, being a family guy. A lover, a protector of his people, a good dude. Meech need to come home. Terry came home with compassionate release. She had COVID or something, right? Yeah, and um, and I guess uh, Meech couldn't come home on that. But it's like, yo, they you wasn't. Know. They not letting him. They they still gonna hold. They gonna hold, especially now. With He's short. With in 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 street terms, we use the term short. Yeah, when you yeah. have a bit on a long end, free fats. We got to just and put them all out the there. Hump, yeah. Free Lindsay, free thug, free all of YSL. They're innocent. Um, that'll be proven shortly. But you, you can know, put this I whole mean, thing behind us. They back to the envy thing. Free Jeffrey. You don't think the motherfuckers see that his movement is gaining notoriety again, even if it is legal. They gonna make, they gonna hold him to the last of the, you feel me, unless his lawyers start pulling strings. Like, um, Cause there's no reason for him to have to do his whole at, sentence. At you the feel end me? of the day, the feds are the feds. You do a certain amount of time on each year and you get good time. Mm -hmm. It's like 52 days on each year for good time, period. His out day is his out day. It is what it is. Yeah. So it's like, that doesn't change. And with the feds, you come home and do some halfway house time. After the halfway house time, you get released all the way. And that's just what it is. He's, he's short. When you do those long end bids and you pass the halfway mark and you get to that last quarter, we call that short. And 
jailbirds. That shit roll. It's nothing. Yeah. This from 2023 right now to 2029, nothing. That shit rave. It's just sad that um he can't be here to see this part, you know, or whatever. But he's extremely proud of his son. He's happy about that. It makes him happy. His son said that's the happiest he's ever seen his father. Mm. Um, is when he was doing that because he did have, that was his whole thing. A lot of the time when they had him on investigation, at the end, they couldn't see him doing nothing but promoting Blue Da Vinci and pro and the yeah. um, record label and rolling with Jeezy and shit like that. Um, because that's what he wanted to do. So this is this is like his dreams coming into fruition. Because his son is in showbiz and mm-hmm. is doing well playing him. What's the fucking odds in mm-hmm. that? So that's lit. I'm always down. That's why I was saying the shit I said about Tory Lanez. I'm always down for redemption. Um, for like that comeback story. Mm-hmm. R. Kelly, not. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> fucking. Whatever happens when you fucking. Yeah. Um, do I still like his songs? Yes. Do I play him when I'm alone? Yes. Not. In front of people because you don't talk about people too much. But no, like nobody wants to see the sex offender predator guy get out and redeem himself. Keep the motherfuckers in cages. That's I I am in a perfect society, when you went to jail, you would get sentenced and judged by the crime individual. It wouldn't be a book that they just go to the book, right? So sometimes if let's say you're a um you're a scary kind of person and you're bullied easily and you from this horrible neighborhood and your siblings beat on you, everybody beat you up and you drive them niggas to the seven eleven after they pressure you half ass whoop your ass, they ride the seven eleven, kill everybody in there, get back in the car. It's motherfuckers like that that said, don't do it. I don't want to do this. That's really pressured and forced into mm-hmm. doing that that are black that are in jail right now, charged with whatever the niggas did in the car car right when technically everybody in that courtroom know this motherfucker really ain't want to do with that and he was in a bad situation mm-hmm. white boy does that he gets off mm-hmm. i watched a white boy kill motherfuckers in texas drunk driving he's driving on the road people are outside at a party he runs into them he kills them they gave that motherfucker afflu they, his 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 um defense was affluencism Meaning he was so rich that he didn't understand the rules. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't yeah. get no jail time. Yeah, and then he violated his fucking probation. And then he went on the run. His mother helped him. And they locked his mom up and him up. But they still ain't getting nigga enough time. I mean, that's that's corny, but shout out to mom for helping her son, bro. No. Man, no, not in that situation because that motherfucker's a monster. This nigga killed people when he at a beer pong party. Mind you, he partying with regular niggas like people don't fucking hate them. People hate you because you yeah, rich already yeah, and you got off, yeah. motherfucker. Um, real quick, I'm gonna skate through some stuff. Um, bitch, y'all real fast, but um, free me, G. You handsome too. I don't know if you're single, baby, but you handsome. You wanna come on the pod when you get out? Come over. You probably years. got a wife. This month. I can wait six. We gonna we better be recording on Mars. <laughs> we gonna be recording some. We gonna record from my room, Demetrius. Anyway, I don't need to be there for that one. Shout out to La Russell. I've been paying attention to La Russell. I think everybody's paying attention to La Russell. He is so cute. And he's very innovative and he's doing things differently. He ain't making money. And he can rap. It's a lot of niggas from that area I'm fucking with. Simba. Simba might come on the podcast. I fuck with Simba. Okay? Y'all don't know who LaRusso is or Simba. Get into it. Simba album came out a couple months ago and I fucking like it. LaRusso Simba's the guy like that Oakland. fucks up them funk or flip, Funk's flex freestyles. Yeah, LaRusso's from the Bay too. Um, But he's just doing his whole style and he's so different. He ain't copying off nobody. Um, he's super talented. His style of rap is not even my style, but it's something about his voice and how he, you know, like how he performs. Okay. I really like his shit. I like you, LaRussell. And I'm, I'm all for like being an individual and standing out. Yeah, check it out. I'm going to start sending you some stuff. The coolest thing about him is... Is he rapping? Yeah, he raps. The coolest thing about him he's is singing. that... The coolest thing about the nigga is that... He fucking knows his demographic and he's making a lot of money just from his people. He's not chasing this huge following trying to figure out the people that like him and fuck with him. He's figured out how to really serve them and make good money. Like it's a way you He can, basically making his type of music. He's not trying to do what nobody else Fuck no. Yeah. That's period. But fuck just making the type of music. That motherfucker's indie for real. Yeah. And he's figured out his demographic. It may be small. It's getting bigger now. But even if it was small, he's making great money, Phelps. He has concerts at the fucking house. 
His father cook us out of food. His mother run a motherfucking door. I mean, they selling shit out. Yeah. It's like a members only thing where it's like, if you're a preferred customer, you pay a certain amount a month, you get access to all the shows, you get the album, you get the merch. He's a fucking genius. All of us need to study him and you should come on a podcast. I mean, you did fucking, what's the call it? Well, he what's that nigga podcast got- from, New York, from Baltimore I did? Jay Hill. But you like, can come on my podcast. This, this is never mind. I ain't, I'm about to say, I'll save it because I ain't. This in my note says, please get <laughs> Keith Murray some help. Method Man, Red For real. Man, whoever, For real. Rizzo, Eric Jizzle, Sermon, whoever's from that fucking Eric era, Sermon, go pick, pick his him black up. ass up. And whoever's fucking recording him, can you stop? Do you niggas have any goddamn empathy for people? It's, you see this nigga high as a goddamn kite. Now, if he fall the fuck down from a heart attack, then what? Do you know CPR, nigga? Y'all keep fucking recording these high motherfuckers, putting out these bullshit-ass interviews. What's wrong with y'all? Let's keep fucking Murray. Um, The one thing, though, is... What? You can't... <laughs> I got something else to say. You got something to say, baby? Some of them people, you can't stop them from getting in front of the camera. It's not necessarily, you know. No, I mean? that's not what I'm saying. Have some kind of fucking integrity. If you know that this motherfucker is saying stuff that they wouldn't normally say or they shouldn't fucking say, just because you're going to get ratings, I'm here for a new energy of, you know what? I'm not going to do this. This is fucking horrible. Like, my platform is better than having this high motherfucker talking about eating this girl coochie that got great hair on it now. No, nah, what you're saying is is what should be right. Shauna still look good. But you want you. you want people to have integrity in yes. media. In media, I want people to have integrity. Period. I want us to stop when people get killed recording it and, and not helping people. I want people to start, you know, getting on the bus and giving a seat up to the old lady. You know what I mean? And guess what? If you digging this bitch wallet, fuck it. You gotta do what you gotta do. But give her the fucking seat. Um, one more thing, really quick. Watch the Bernie Madoff documentary. A lot of y'all was in my document, my my um, y'all was in my DM about that other documentary I told y'all to watch. Don't pick up the phone. Watch it, bitch. You're never gonna believe what the fuck you see. And I don't want to debate shit. I tell you to watch it, and then I tell you what to think about it, and then we leave it there. This ain't no motherfucking democracy, nigga. <laughs> this is don't call me white girl podcast, nigga. And I'm the goddamn tyrant. I'm the evil Dre, you be watching these uh, shits? Prince, uh, queen of the village, motherfucker. <laughs> Off with your motherfucking head if you disagree with me, nigga. That's why I block people. This ain't no motherfucking democracy. Say it with me at home. This ain't no motherfucking democracy, nigga. This the Monaville, nigga. You want to live here? You got to do drugs and agree with me, nigga. You lucky Dre in this motherfucker. She talking to y'all. <laughs> Phelps do what the fuck I say. Nigga, because of this coochie. Mm, that sound good. I'm big as a motherfucker. I ain't seen this coochie in months. <laughs> <laughs> and all you motherfuckers that's in my dance tomorrow, I'll train you. I'll train. I don't want you to train me, Raheem, with no goddamn gallons of milk. I ain't, um, I'm not meeting your raggedy, ashy ass at Planet Fitness. Oh, Mona, I just want to show you love and train. Y'all go to your picture. You got one video doing push ups. And 10 memes about eating pussy. I ain't no dummy. You trying to fuck me. You think I'm going to be somewhere sweating in the gym while you got your nasty ass hands on me trying to show me something? No, thank you. I don't need no trainer. Trainer need me, nigga. I lost, first of all, first of all, I went to prison May of 2007. I was whole without bond. They let me out June, July, August. In August, I was walking down the hallway when I left. My pants fell down. A lot of them they saw my panties. Guess why? I lost that much weight, Dre. So you can do it again. And guess what I used to do? I would cut trash bags off, trash trash bags up, right? Put one on as a shirt, put one on as pants, make the holes. Dre looks. Free went home. Dre looks disgusted. Dre looks like he smells shit. But he's listening, and he's tired, too. He's got the puppy dog eye thing. A lot of y'all be, oh, Dre looks so fine. Dre, Dre looks better in person. <laughs> and you can never, ever get him, ever. No matter how many pussy pics you send. Word. You no know how many motherfucking cash apps you send me. Now, if you send me cash apps. Relationship And restored. I'm talking to Dre about you. At least he heard it. Certainly <laughs> open your DMs. Feel me? 
Anyway, and you bitches better not DM Phelps. And I mean that nah, shit. Nah, now you. I mean that. <laughs> Trash bags. Office open. My office hours is from nine to five. Any whore. Um, I was describing Dre. His hair is glistening. His teeth are pearly white. His eyes are a little glazed because he's sleepy, but he looks like he smells shit. He's totally tired. Aren't are you tired? Good. Dre definitely. Dre, tell the truth. You tired? I want to know that I know what you look like when you tired. I'm a little. You tired, nigga? He wear how you wear natural styles, but they shimmer like that. Shit is crazy. He's like... a man. He's <laughs> gorgeous. Um. Thank you. Anyway, um, trash what... bags. Okay, trash bags on my top, trash bags on my bottom, okay? I would put sweatsuits over top of it. I would wear, like, one of the inmate uniforms in a sweatsuit. We would run around the bottom tier. We'd, like, walk really fast because you're not allowed to run. We would walk really fast around the bottom tier, run up the steps, then walk up the top stairs, and then go back to the steps, and that was one. And then each week I increased them. So we started like 10 to 15 to 20. We would do that. We would do burpees. We would do the things like this. We sit on the wall. We would do all these butt exercises. My thing was always I want to raise my butt or whatever. But I didn't even realize I was doing it. I was doing the killer time. And I worked out every day with this little Asian girl who was 17, but she was indicted. It's very strange because we were all on max. So we didn't come out to sell much. Shout out to my jail birds. Free the jails, nigga. Free the jails. Either way, I don't remember dieting. I didn't really drink soda because they didn't have soda. But in those three months, I literally lost like 30 or 40 pounds. My, my history of losing weight is always like a fast thing. Crash diet, crazy working out, whatever. But I remember coming home and it was like a bonus. Oh, my God, I'm so small. And my hair fell out. I was facing two years in prison, so all my hair fell out. And I had to get it tapered in the back and get a little bob. Okay. Can we um, do it again? But yeah, I can do it again. I, I have to get it here though. I said we. I'll do it with you. You will. Yeah. Let's do it with I gotta get back in the gym too. Can we do it with like your penis? <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Um, but yeah, I gotta do it because I don't I don't I don't really like being fat. I do like having this big fat ass. Like Phelps brung up how I keep losing my phone, I can't find it, and it be right under my butt. And Quaddy said something about my butt being out when we went to brunch. Because he said my butt was so fat, he couldn't focus even though I'm a sis. Um, and as, not having this big, huge ass is kind of difficult. Sometimes I be thinking somebody digging in my pocket or somebody behind me too close. The whole time it's my ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. I wish I could stand up and show y'all. Can I? Can I show them my butt? No, 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 no. Because. My belly? That, nah, lift up your shirt. Because it's open. Why can't I show them my butt? Uh -huh. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah, they... That thing's banging. For those who are listening, Mona is standing I'll up listen. right now and is showing you her. What kind of jeans is doing? What she calls clappers. Excuse <laughs> me. Yo! <laughs> Don't you love DeAndre's explanations? That sound like that meme with the, the butt be button. <laughs> And I love it because I missed her. Anyway, okay, real fast, but yeah, watch Bernie Madoff. Um, I love, I love watching Ponzi schemes like after they finally break up and they break down all the stuff. It's just funny because I mean, you know what a Ponzi scheme is for, for mm -hmm. the most part. You know what a Ponzi scheme is, right? Um, for the people at home, they don't know what a Ponzi scheme is. It's getting money from Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. So I can sell you anything, Herbalife. Oops. <laughs> um, or something like that and it's just you know Ponzi scheme similar to a pyramid scheme yeah but a Ponzi scheme is well no I guess I guess why are they similar are they similar are Ponzi schemes and pyramid schemes similar yeah I, just, I guess the similarity is that it keeps flowing like that yeah the thing about Ponzi schemes that fuck me up Ponzi is that scheme bigger, everybody doesn't always give fuck though yeah because if you're in that thing not towards the end, you might have got paid. You were supposed to get paid with investor money or whatever. Mm -hmm. For Bernie Madoff to have a Ponzi scheme to that big for so long, it was so criminal. And for him to be the one to go to jail, you know what I didn't know? One of his sons, first of all, on a documentary, Bernie Madoff documentary, so many people commit suicide. People that he fucked over. Um, his son commits suicide. Um yeah, I seen it was like people die after they say, after they get convicted. 
fuck after they get fifty after they lost all the money. It just but you know what? When the when the when the stock market crashed back in the day, black and white times, they was jumping out their window on Wall Street. The white people when they ain't got that baby Can we read some DMs or something? We've been here a minute. Don't rush me, you nigga. Done, you done got a burst of energy that you Shout hike. out to my boy, though. I drunk Cappuccino. Shout out to my boy. This is a better view brand. It's a black brand, and this quality is really good. I meant to bring that up. I didn't finish what I was saying about the brands. Some of these black brands are amazing with, with great quality. I just had on the Unicorn brand. It was crazy. Softest shit I ever had on. I think her name is Brittany B. Branding with the better if you can. Um, oh, yeah. This, uh, with, uh, this, this Bonesy, Radical Youth, too. Radical this, Youth this has great quality and is very unique. Yeah. Um, I like Bonesy. Thanks for stuff. cutting me off because now I can't fucking remember what the fuck. I, oh, Olu with Joyride. Um, my boy Gash would carry my own weight. Those are Delaware brands, but it's a couple brands that got some real nice shit. What else did I just wear? That I loved. Um, fuck, am I not gonna remember? I can't remember, but it had diamonds all on the back of the hoodie. It was so cute. Am I forgetting something? Dope itself. We love dope, dope itself. itself. Oh yeah, dope and it, it's fuck. it's got the real tag too. It's not a gilded in here. It's like a real joint in here. Go ahead, pop. Shout out to pop, my baby pop with his handsome ass. Won't show up to my podcast. This whatever nigga. <laughs> yeah, pop. There, there go your um. Yeah, Cause it's beef now. It's like at this point, nigga, we about to have a problem. Cause now I'm taking you. You, you not accepting this invite as motherfucking disrespect. Yeah. Let's be real, nigga. You feel me? We both from up top. I might gotta go up top on you. You said in Philly, do you feel me? We know how to fight, so you know what's up when you All right, you know what's wait, up with you? us. Did you see academics? Nah, it's um, not me, it's you. Yeah, you already know what's up with me. I'm a bitch. He got my back. Um, Dre keeps showing me the time because he don't want he don't he doesn't like when I talk to y'all past 40 minutes. Um Me and Drake got the same posture. Look. Yeah, because y'all tired. I don't care. Um, boom. Dark side of the DM. Hold on, before that, I remember we talked about it, but shouting out. Damar Hamlin as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we almost. But forgot. see, I, if I talk about that, I have to talk about. But I, I think football you don't is wanna, bullshit. You don't want to skip through. My your... sons are not allowed to play football. And I don't give a fuck about what y'all think about it. It's ridiculous that you're using your head to do half your job. It's too violent. Did you know when you shake your brain and your skull, that's dangerous to do it once? These motherfuckers doing it every day. It don't make no sense. And that boy crashing and that shit happens and they want to, you know, people were mad because they stopped the game. And then I say to Phelps, Phelps said, it's not combat, it's combat, whatever he said. No, it made I a said, lot of sense. I said, it's not, um, I said, it's not a contact sport. Like people think it's a collision sport. It's not the same thing. You feel so the me? game's supposed to go on. No, nah, I'm nah. not saying that game should have went on, but I'm just saying that football is not contact sport; it's a collision sport. So this but is the that's purpose the way of he it. Explained to me when I was so like, why the fuck would they wanted to go on? That's how I explained it. If it, real true football fans, that's I mean, just what come with the territory. It's, it's football has changed a lot. I mean, of course, I played football in college and played all my life, but they just dropped I mean, in on y'all. No, just for context. But <laughs> what happened to him was tragic. Like I. That's, that shit got to me, honestly, because, you know, you how much dedication and everything you put into it, but to have somebody almost die on the field, like, I don't care how much money somebody make, you don't sign yeah. up to do that. So, and one of my friends plays for the Bills as well, one of my old teammates. It's just, it's just a wild, wild Is thing. he doing better like he'll be back on the field? Yeah, he's doing better now. The, now, the, the one thing. No, I doubt he'll play football again. The, oh, shit. I mean, not. Even I don't even know how you could mentally yeah do that, do that because that it was such a the hit wasn't it wasn't an uncommon, even a bad bad joint, like right. football move or anything like that so I doubt that he'll ever do that right. again. What the f- no this but what's wrong with y'all? Why the fuck would you play something like that? Well, f- well, first I went to school for free. And you have the opportunity to make millions of dollars. Um, Testosterone. And Does also, it hurt when y'all slam into it? Did also, you have it's a not that, that bad. You slam that you do. Like, what were you? I was a I play receiver and so college. you catch the ball you yeah. run the ball so y'all the one you the one they chase and slam into you well kind of you don't get hit that like hard on who uh, does the most hit in the linebackers and shit the probably most physical position is the lineman they and go at it like, oh, into each other every play they mm-hmm. bro doesn't that yeah. hurt I mean not hurt is like. It's not like somebody's punching you in the face or something like that. You get aches and bruises and stuff like that after the game, but it's not like Dre, painful. My ankle is throbbing from that walk I took to get here. Them steps is double whammy. My senior year, I had to take like one pack of pain pills to practice and two to play every game. 
I that's will, why I decided not to continue to try to pursue anything who had after a bag that. of pain pills? Yo, I say this. It was like this Tylenol. I played mostly I basketball. Like, I played football one year in high school. That was like the most hurt I've been playing a sport ever. Yeah. Like that, them couple months right there, I was like, yeah. That it takes a toll is, on your body. Bro, my, my <laughs> Smush father played football. He was good in high school. And some of his friends did the like, what's the shit where it's not pro, but it's whatever? Like arena football? I don't know. One of his fucking friends end up, he didn't go to college at first, went to community, motherfucker got picked up. He did the impossible and got picked up from a community school and got away and ended up playing for the Panthers. Them niggas was all about football. Switch father thinks he's playing for, he can't play football. I, I mean, it, I would take him to court. That's how serious it is. That CTE shit, and these, you talking about anger yeah. problems, you getting confused, you beating your wife, fuck what you just passed down getting hurt on the field. Shaking your brain up causes huge, it causes problems, Dre. I mean, I get what you're saying. Look at the boxers that end up with. Yeah, I, I get what you're the saying. The shakes and shit. But I think, why are we, why? I think if, like, like I said, for me, it. Men. I went to college for free. So it opened up a lot of doors for me. And this next generation, they won't even think of college the same as what we thought. Because mm-hmm. a lot of us were first yeah. generation college. So our parents, because they couldn't go, wanted us to go. That's a fact. Um, so for me, it was like free college. But. It's, football is not on a, especially depending on what level you play on, it's not that bad. The NFL is different because these are high class athletes, like full speed dudes that are like 6'5, 280. Mm-hmm. Like that's a whole different. The people you playing with at high school and stuff like that, they ain't going to really do a lot of damage to you. Rarely do you see like somebody. Right. When your brain shakes in your fucking head once, it's dangerous. I, I seem good, right? I don't know. Sometimes when you sleep, you're a little loopy. Let's go to the dark side of the damn. Um, shout out Tank, too, for one of that. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Javonta, Baltimore ass. Yeah. And shout out to the Baltimorean that bought my stuff at 7 Eleven because my Apple Cash wasn't working. working. Thank you, to And Jerron Ennis, he a Philly boy, too. Fought yesterday. He uh, fought before Tank. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Meek robbed, Mills right? for causing some ruckus in the Did crowd. They rob- Huh. Shout out to my OG for breaking it up. That was wild. Every tank fight I went to, I've been to his last two. It was always fights in the crowd during the fight. Yeah. Always. That's yeah. tough. He bring the niggas out. That's Did you go doing. to this one? I didn't go to... This one was in D.C. And I figured it was going to be quick because he ain't fighting nobody. But I went to the last two in Atlanta and New York. And I'm going to the one in Vegas against Ryan Garcia. I need to go. It's time for me to go to a fight. Because I like boxing. But I got to sit up there. And I know that shit is like impossible. It's expensive and it's impossible. You probably sit on the floor. It don't be like. It might be a stack. Uh, that's doable. Yeah, it's not like I need to do it's it. It's more than no, that, no, ain't it? No, oh, it the depends. bigger fights. It yeah, depends. Yeah, like yeah, when yeah, I went, yeah. when I went to see him, he fought a dude named Roley in uh, New York. I think this floor was like a stack, starting at a stack. But the one for Ryan Garcia is probably his biggest fight. Will mm-hmm. probably be one of his biggest fights ever. And it's in to Vegas. Date. Yeah, to date. It's going to be his biggest fight to date. So. Yeah. Like, maybe even, I mean, his weight class, Ryan Garcia, is probably the biggest name or the most anticipated fight. But those floor seats, probably, because everybody going to come out and that proximity to L.A., like, yeah. where Vegas, like, yeah. it's going to be so many people there. Like, it's, yeah. it's going to be crazy. I want to go. But the one that he just fought was in D.C. But I've been to all his fights and I just was like. I like boxing. I'm a boxing fan. And it's crazy because even though boxing is the same with football, I just, I don't know. I just like. I know. You just dog football. (laughs) Boxing ain't that bad. (laughs) Boxing's cool. It's not that bad. The niggas trying to knock each other out. Combat ain't that bad. This is okay. (laughs) But the one where they're wearing protective equipment. Nah. Never. No. <laughs> For what? I might as well watch kindergarten boxing matches. Okay. Um, dark side of the DM. Um, mm. I broke up with my baby daddy in September. Around October, I started fucking with another guy that we both went to high school with. Mind you, we're now in our 30s. Baby daddy and new boo pull up at the same time. Now baby daddy has threatened, has threatened, threatened. Okay, now baby daddy has has threatened the guy to kill him. He says he's gonna kill the guy he went to high school with. Okay. Um, and I had to get a VPO, a violation of protection order. What the fuck is a VPO? What is a VPO? Keep reading, I'll look it up. 
Um, baby daddy has calmed down, but he scared my new nigga off. I feel like my new nigga is acting like a pussy and left because BD and let the BD scare him off. Baby, you're spelling in this joint. Like I'm about to kick this joint out because this is crazy. Like it's like is it you rushing because you excited, or can you just not sell, spell? Um, I feel like my new nigga is acting like a pussy and left BD scare him off. His dick is amazing, though. Should I keep fucking Zaddy, sweet dick, or leave him alone? Love you, love the show, love the crew. Please give me your advice. All he just said is you ain't worth dying for. Like, <laughs> y'all bitches be tripping sometimes. Um, The fact, it's like, the question was, should I keep fucking Zaddy, sweet dick? Zaddy, sweet dick don't, don't want, want you, you when you get yeah. on the Like, I'm so out. Like, fuck move you on, talking babe. about? Move on. Um... You Next dark side of DM, yeah. I got too many. It's like it's an influx of them. You bitches need me. Like I'm about to just make this a complete show, just advice alone. Also, I think that's whack on niggas part too. What to like threaten a nigga? Like if somebody that you knew from like a long, I, you think it had anything to do that went to high school together or it was just a nigga? That I think that's what it was. I think because he probably didn't like him back then and don't like him now. <laughs> and a lot of niggas, like I've had niggas where they just they just literally claimed you like a property. This is my pussy. You don't fuck my pussy. Don't mess with my bitch. So once the nigga get that type of, you know, it's over. Do you get? Do you outgrow that at any age? Like that's as far as from the men. Childish, yeah. Shit, you should because you gonna get your feelings hurt because you'll figure out that ain't your pussy couple times. <laughs> you will learn it. it ain't your kitty cat, baby. You 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 leasing that thing, it, baby. You know, right? And a player ain't gonna let itself look all crazy out here. Okay, a pimp gonna do his thing. Yeah. You know, you sweating and wrestling in the grass over this bitch, and she didn't did it to three of your cousins. Mm. <laughs> Pay attention, stay woke, king. <laughs> Shout out to my nigga TK. Every spring, it's a group of new college which is coming. Now, you heard me? Two more. Mona, I need advice. Me and my nigga four years have been shacking up. He showed he slowed down on the dick. He said his sex drive is low, but he seems interested in a threesome. But I said we need to work on us first. I took a trip to DR on a girl's trip. I remember this one. I took a trip to DR on a girl's trip and I had sex with a girl there. Should I tell him I did it? He said he never mind he never minded me having a girlfriend as long as he was able to watch, or should I take it to the grave? Listen, take it from me. They lie. When they say, yeah, I don't care if you fuck with a bitch. I don't consider that cheating. It's a lie. Child, he will get your manny fresh and put that bitch in the head like a big, give her a bloody nose before you know it. You know how niggas are about that cat. Keep your mouth closed. You know what I say. It ain't never happened if you don't say it happened. Man, listen. Tell him for what? And don't get that nigga no threesome. He ain't even fucking she you. Don't, um, well, I don't the, know. Maybe at, give him at the end of the day, that. She might be at a point if she's trying to save this relationship that that could be the, that could be the make or break. So if it's it could save the relationship or it could be a point to where she like, you know what? I like women. So that's something. what I was thinking. Yeah. But listen, they've been together for four years. She said shacking up. So I don't know if they're even a couple. Not, but yeah. if he's slowing down on dick, he's cool with the relationship. She's not in a, a chance. She doesn't have a chance at losing him and leaving him because he's not happy. She's not happy with the dick. So I think the half of the part of what you said is right. Okay. She really just wants pussy. Yeah. Go do your one too. Yeah, Be I a think. lesbian. Oh. Stop holding on to stuff, y'all. Yo, y'all yo, like, don't overshare too. It's like, why would you tell? Like Mona said. And then number two, when a dude sometimes be like, yeah, I don't care. You mess with a girl. He want it under his his circumstances not young and i feel like that if a nigga is cool with it i feel like it was made known from the rip not like y'all yeah. already been in a relationship and then it's like oh well, yeah nah it's like i knew you was a lesbian <laughs> when i met you you feel me all right it's the last one um this one violated rule number one the dark side of dm which is too many motherfucking letters and words and shit <laughs> but i'm gonna skim through it Hey, Mona, I'm sad as shit. Sorry, I know you probably want to see a happy DM. I just started a new business. First of all, I want to say happy. Bitch, are you new here? It's dark side of the DM. Dark side. I don't, happy DMs. Happy DMs don't make the pod. <laughs> um, I just started a new business. Um, 
she put something in quotations. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that part. I have zero clients. I have a corporate background. Probably. I don't enjoy it, but it comes easy to me. But I need the money, so now I want to give it up. I know tax season. She she does taxes. I know tax season just started yesterday, but it's stressful. Um, I can't get advice from my family, not even my mom or dad or stepdad, because as a 24-year-old, I'm starting to do things they never did, purchase a home, car, a passport, et cetera, or just did last year at 47 instead of congratulations. It's like I'm getting hate. So what she's saying is somebody at 47 just either bought their first house, their first car, or got a passport. Um, and this is out of her parents. Stop throwing shade um, at your parents. So shady, but whatever. And <laughs> instead of congratulations, it's like I'm getting hate. Even after my stepdad telling me straight up, I don't believe in you. I decided to forgive, move on. But constant jealousy being thrown from the people that should be supporting me makes me feel alone. I have friends, but I'm from Clayton County, Georgia. Most of them are complacent or just don't have the capacity to talk about certain things. Another shot at the people around you and have real input. I got a boyfriend, but he's just dull. I love him, but sometimes... Um, I wonder, is it just because he's paying bills? So all that to say, I really feel like I don't have nobody in my life to guide me. I don't know how to handle parents that try to hold you down. So you don't pass them. Better help is not affordable. I don't care. It was cheaper to DM you. <laughs> I'm just happy to get this off my chest. Thank you. So she was venting. You one of them people that, like, when the friends get together, we always forget to invite you because you get on everybody's nerves. Yeah. You just irked the shit out of me. Like, Word. if we was squad and I like me, it. like, say me, you and Phelps always home together, I would call Phelps and be like, let's go get tacos, but don't tell Demetra. I thought I'd just move. You a drag. You ain't got to tell me nothing. You know me. You was already never going to call me. Yeah, I wasn't. Shut the fuck up. You going to do that. Shut the fuck up. I don't really fuck with nobody that, that give me that kind of energy, though, to where it's like. Uh, it's okay, you're, first of all, when it, let's get into it. I have had the spiritual whistleblower on this goddamn podcast. I just read her book. It was amazing. My family can kiss my ass. Great book. Get it. Trust me. I am totally here for gauging your relations by how these people treat you versus gauge your relations from their title. Based off so, the history, yeah. I'm going to call my dad a dad. That's my dad. Treat him like a dad. If I was the gift. When this nigga acts like a nigga in the street. Mm -hmm. I've had the feeling of a parent feeling like they were jealous or not happy for you. It's horrible. It's terrible. Should it happen? No. Mm -hmm. Access your fucking surroundings. If you have those kind of parents, what the fuck you keep telling them about your motherfucking yeah. successes for? They don't want to hear it. We get caught up in this shit and it gets so sad. Ooh, I don't have parents that give a fuck about me. Don't fuck it. Can the bitch make chitlins? Is that where you like to go for Thanksgiving? Then enjoy that with them. And don't tell them motherfuckers your goals and dreams. That older lady at your job that you love so much give you that, the great speeches or whatever... Pour into and, that relationship. And, you know, you got this OG. I have a woman in my life that is like a friend, a mom, a therapist, uh, everything. I'm pouring into that because she pours into me. I like that. That works for me. I can't get that from my aunts. You understand what I'm saying? I done built my own motherfucking aunt. Shout out to Toya. I also want to say on, on her behalf, too. Family forever. Um... So we only hear on one side of the story. Here. I'm not saying it's the girl who sent you. us the message fault, but it's like you talked about she she stated she did everything um at 24 that all these motherfuckers is doing at 48 because they spent all of that time raising you, make sure you were straight. They could have been had their degrees and cars and houses. You know how much totally you're... disagree with that, but go ahead. What you mean? I just disagree, babe. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Please continue. I hate when you give me them eyes. So, it makes me nervous. Could you please? So you never you you've never sacrificed anything for your children? Um, no, that's not uh, what I'm saying. That's okay. not that's not the part I disagree with. That's that's what I'm speaking on. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, finish and then I'll tell you what I disagree with. That's it. Um, I disagree with the whole thing is like you're the reason why they couldn't accomplish shit. Jealous motherfuckers is jealous. So it don't matter whether they had time to do it or not. If, if those type of parents did have college degrees, they would be jealous that you're doing something different. You know what I mean? Let's say they had college degrees and they had lives and they have stuff. And then you get into entertainment. They'd have been jealous of that. A person that has that jealous, envious heart, they'll give that to their friends, their kids, their whatever. And to me, yeah. it's not fixable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A jealous, envious motherfucker, it is... It is a fault. It is a bad thing. You should stay away from that. And I'm going to tell you when it's cut off, who's jealous in my life or whatever, as far as, yo, I bought a house where my first house is big, pretty house behind her thing. 
People came out the woodworks to celebrate me. People said, congratulations. My father never came to see that house. That's large to me. Yeah. My, we live in different cities, right? But he worked in the city I lived in. He worked. He worked in what was that? There, that is blatant. That is not a mistake. That is, And I'm talking about after I noticed, I say, hey, why haven't you came here? Like, yo, I've been keeping by you. What is keeping you from here? Couldn't stomach it. Couldn't take gag. Ugh. I love my father. You know what I mean? That's just what it is. I've seen that more than once. I've seen girls where their mother was jealous because they body and how they look. Yeah, yeah, Like, I've yeah. seen that dynamic where the girl's 16 and the mother's, you know, early 40s, late 30s or whatever, and she is just out and out. My mother experienced um, being put out of her mother's house because her boyfriend was looking at her. Like, that shit goes on and happens. And my mother is and was gorgeous. You know what I'm saying? Flat stomach, big old fat ass. You know how we built Phelps? Mm -hmm. Them green eyes here in her back, gorgeous. It You got to get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like for me, it is very important that at this stage of the game, I'm judging you, engaging how you treat me, period. I don't give a fuck what you're going through. You could be somebody for 20, 30 years, they depressed for half of that relationship, and they were horrible to you for that half. Listen, if you could take it and you could be a friend through that, I commend you. I will not. I'm not wasting no more time with that because some kind of way. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that I've been able to, whether I was depressed or stressed out or whatever, I still didn't treat you bad, right? So yeah. it's like when I look back on stuff, because it's like you have a relationship with somebody, you'll be friends 20 years or your sister or whatever. And they go through this rough patch. But the rough patch lasts seven years. So for seven years, you're going to be abused by this motherfucker yeah. while he drinking? You know what I mean? No more. Me now, you have to treat me a certain way to be allowed to be around me. And I think all of us should act like that. Stop holding on to these titles. Stepfather, father, mother. You should be able to tell your dreams and your goals to your mother, your stepfather, your parental units. They should be proud of you. They should be pushing you out. They should be trying to support you. If they not, stop telling them. Stop getting caught up in the thought of it and being sad about it. Get the fuck over it. Yeah. Find you another mother. I feel like that's and, hard. And, uh, but, but, this, but this is what I'm speaking towards. It's I like... Did. I, the, the 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 issue that I ha see what you're speaking towards is people the relationship is already built it's all the, all like you said the jealousy is already there her whole thing was was these people are jealous of me because I did these things at this age like that that was her premise like you feel me that just feel kind of like I mean that's probably what she thinks but I think it's hard not to talk to him because you get to a point to where shit you got to talk to your parents well it just get, it get to a point to where you. <laughs> There is nothing else to talk about because this is my life. Mm -hmm. So you want me not to talk about my life. You don't you you I'm mm -hmm. in a conversation with you. You ask me what's going on, what's new. Mm -hmm. I can't talk to you about nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's like impossible to just not talk about what I'm doing because what I'm doing is my life. So right, if I can't yeah. talk about that, then well, I can't I talk I about my life. Well, I might have misspoke. What I'm saying is you alter relationship to suit you. Yeah. So let's say you love that back home. Cause it, what I got out of it is you keep she around a lot of conversation service level. That's what yeah, because you were around. What I got out of it she is the, like when Dre says, family, "When Dre says move, it's the whole area." Even when she say her nigga, he's complacent. She from an area, small town. You get a job, mm -hmm. it's enough to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. You cool. You on vacation once a year. You cool. You want more than that, Shaquita. You see bigger than that. So you do have to, you know, kind of step up out of that change your environment. But you can change those relationships to what suits you. Yeah. Eventually, you'll learn that none of it'll suit you, and you have to cut these motherfuckers yeah. off completely, which is something that the whistleblower would tell you. Cut them off, don't talk to them. But in the beginning, you could do stuff like, you know you love them biscuits and gravy, and you love that time of Thanksgiving and y'all open the gifts together. Spend time with them then when you just doing service level shit and it's just fun hoopla bullshit talk. But for, the, but for the most part, that can't be the place you go for support and for comfort like yeah. how other people could do their parents. Yeah. Those motherfuckers ain't your parents. I had to learn that shit a long time ago. I grew up like I would come home from school with nobody at the house. I had to make myself dinner. Yep. I had to figure it out for the night. Yep. My mother would come in. She would go right to her room. She would go to sleep, wake up, go to school, to work the mm -hmm. next day. I didn't have that. People got, I remember motherfuckers would get dressed for the prom and their mothers would throw a party. Full DJ, cooking food. I got dressed for the prom by myself. In the back, tying my dress up with a mirror, trying to figure it out. Yeah. Getting my menstrual as a kid. Like, literally, figuring out on a kid. Like, what do you do? I didn't have my mom laying you down with the hot towel, baby. Now you're a woman. And 
it changed me. And I did envy girls that had it. But once I like accepted that's what it was, it was easier to keep it rolling. My shit's unique. I also ain't have a motherfucker barking down my neck when I was going out. That was three days. I'm 17. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got real grown. Like, you know what? Well, bitch, I'm grown then now. And I enjoyed the luxuries of being a fucking Adele in high school. You know what I mean? So it's like, by the time I was in like 12th grade, I lived with my nigga and his mom. Like, you know what I mean? I was grown as shit. Never had that conversation with my mom. Was living there for months before she was like, do you live with them? Yeah. <laughs> Are you living there, mom? Hey, I have been for 90 voicemail. days. <laughs> it's been you can leave. One. Go. I will. I have one more. You can get the fuck out. He just want to smoke that weed. No, I don't. You get up if you want. You get you up. Want if you, want. Want. you want me to tell the truth? No, you I don't. Me, I don't oh, want. Right. You want me to tell the truth? You want me to tell the truth? Yeah. Because I know something I wasn't supposed to tell today, too. So what's up? Oh, but you got me on. last week my about bomb, my heartbreak. My bombs on you is way bigger. We're not going to do that. The only difference is you bomb on me. <laughs> I bomb on you. You just take it. You bomb on me. I'm going to crack you. <laughs> So but, what's up? But this, I just gotta ask you one more question and we can leave. I swear. Yeah. Fuck the voice, but we're gonna skip it. Last one. Hi, Mona. I love the show. I just want to get to the point. We can experience black men, the niggas, being best friends with women on no sexual stuff, just on a fam level. But we will we ever experience the niggas having feminine gay men as a best friend on the same level, just fam level, as if they were with a female. Um, I want to know because you and the crew thoughts because Mona you hang with the niggas and you would get a respectable answer from Phelps and the other niggas is a part that's a part of the show he says niggas so many times in his DMs I feel like he's saying that just to speak my language is there niggas out there <laughs> not scared to have unconditional love for a femboy that's not a person in their family but feel this person is like them that's not a person in this family. is such a strange question it makes me think that you have something specific going on but fellas yeah could you be um, a fe- when, when you say, say femboy, femboy is that very feminine. somebody who is gay or just a feminine straight uh, hetero man? I'm assuming gay, a gay yeah, yeah, feminine, but not gay. a cool, not a laid back. Probably you like would a zesty know, bull. Let you talk to him. We talking about fem. When I think fem, I'm thinking lashes. I'm thinking you might throw a little hair in. I'm thinking very feminine. Well, I don't nails. Well, me personally, well, first I have questions: is is it more that they prefer to hang out with women versus? You know what I'm saying? Like, do those type of men who are feminine like that prefer to hang out with women more than... But no, but his question is more, could you do it? He's coming from the standpoint that a femboy could be friends with the niggas just like the girls are. You know, it'd be hood princess. You stand with all your friends. I'm the princess out the crib. I got your answer. Could a straight man be that type my answer as a woman would be he would have to grow up with that guy that's never that's not gonna be a relationship that grows unless it's something like that's unique like um you're a rapper and that's your stylist yeah. so now you didn't introduce being around this guy because he's doing the service for you and you just learn to love him because y'all around each other all the time um besides that no i cannot see a straight man um, just getting into a generic relationship. Let's say you do you work in cubicles and the femme gay boy next to you cracks you the fuck up. That might turn into something, but mm, closest yeah. family, I don't see yeah, it. I, I, you would have to grow up with that nigga for that to happen. And also, don't just assume me, I hang with the niggas and that's my relationship with men are really, really intricate. Like I'm the girl they call for support for that conversation. My niggas have conversations with me they wouldn't have with their mother. Mm-hmm. So it's like that shit go hand in hand. I feel like I have a very much like a sister kind of thing with most of my male friends. Mm-hmm. Especially like I'm an older sister or you know what I mean? It's 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 not as surface as we just drink or whatever. Them niggas call on me for shit. And I've seen those relationships a lot with black women when they're the only friend. She the bitch that hold his money. She the bitch that called the lawyer. She the mm-hmm. big meat documentary. She he had a girl that was like started cleaning. They was like this down to when he's getting pulled over. She's driving him for an hour while they waiting on whether they gonna pull over mm-hmm. or not. For the feds, like, and she asked them, "What you want to do? You want to run or not?" This bitch ain't never been in jail, mm-hmm. you know. So I think that don't just assume that the relationships are like surface like that. I think they'd be deeper when the girls hang with the guys, because yeah. I mean, you know, we have a certain exactly. closeness. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that's my final answer, and then Phelps has the answer. I don't know, Dre, you answer right? No, I, well, to the questions, I think it can't happen. When I think about times that I, I hung out around femme like gay dudes, it's people that I work with, like you're saying, mm-hmm. like build a relationship through like working with them and then we'll go out and like have drinks or something like that. I don't think it's necessarily against it. It's just naturally it doesn't hap- happen. Because you're not hanging in the same Because I'm not hanging in those mm-hmm. circles, but it's not like I have something against that. Like it's just a person. If you have a general, gen- genuine relationship with somebody, you like kicking it with them, they make you laugh. Like, I ain't going to discriminate against you because of... God, forgive me. It feels irritating. It irritates me to a certain extent because it's just like, 
everything about that is turns into like, well, why can't you have a gay friend? Yeah. Because does that translate to you being fucking homophobic? No. But that, that's what I'm saying. It, it, you could substitute that with any ethnicity, any race. Why don't I have an Asian friend? Why don't I have... Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's but like, he's it's comparing not... it to like a girl like me who has a lot of male yeah. friends. So is that possible for... Because a girl like yeah, me... It's possible. It's a man and we're just alike because he's a fem boy. So why can't he be the person? And it's like, he definitely can be with the trade, he could be with the gay tough niggas. That, yeah. uh, he could be the girl with the gay tough guys. But for him to just be with, a, with straight guys to the level of family after meeting on the street, fuck no. no. They would have to be from the same project. Yeah. And he would have had to have been known as gay the whole time because if he came out as adult, niggas be irritated by that. Yeah. Niggas feel like, oh, you didn't say it or whatever. Got me it would have to be the gay guy you knew feel. was gay, yeah. you grew up with. Just like, I told you, it's, it's girls that are trans that I've been watching them transition so they were nine and ten they from the hood so yeah and they get respect and they go buy some weed talk whatever chill but friends to the point of family fuck no like my, why the fuck would you even think so my, my thing is and why is, is that wrong is is most of the time they gotta um their energy is very flamboyant and i don't that energy you know with me you gotta bring your energy down. even if you're a woman you can't be around me the straight nigga can't be around felt super horny acting crazy woman, trying to anybody, fuck every bitch in the yeah, club you gotta woman, be calm yeah, whatever so it's like but they naturally not like I that i hope we're not misspeaking nah. because i assume that fin boy was flamboyant too but i don't know if that's the same thing i don't know if every fin boy is flamboyant but you saying the one and be flamboyant that's cool yeah, i don't want to yeah, be running a flamboyant yeah, yeah. straight bitch i'm but me and phelps I don't know. I, I have a um a move for it. Phelps is not dealing with it. Phelps ain't dealing with a hype nothing. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, straight don't matter. Gay. Yeah. If you a squirrel, slow the fuck down up that tree. Yeah. Chill out, motherfucker. That's <laughs> Phelps. Put a scully on and relax, Mr. Squirrel. <laughs> Y'all remember Wallace had on car horn. You know what I mean? Like relax. Used to punch the shit out of Wallace when Wallace was too hype. Real quiet when you brought Wallace up. Is that the end? <laughs> <laughs> We're manifesting more relationships with femboys. You femboys can be my friend. Woo woo. We gonna manifest uh, respecting people's space and how they feel about shit and th- stop taking it personal. That's what we gonna respect. Yeah, and I definitely don't think that DM the guy in the DM he didn't no, say no, no, that, no, but no, that's no. the energy I felt from it. Yeah, I felt like why you won't be my friend. Like you could, what is why you was wrong with and, me? And it's about, and it's about, like her. and it's about common interests. It's like gay men and gay guys. They make it clear of rip. Oh, I don't, I don't watch sports. I don't like one, two, three, four, five. And even for the the guys and shit that don't like sports, we once to keep it a buck. Once we in a room with a nigga that we cool with and we don't like like our commonality isn't sports or something not like to the no 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 i was about to say if our, if, okay. if it's not like a hobby driven conversation like cars or like some real technical shit like that bro it's music and bras bro like, like that's what we that's that's what we about to connect on you feel me like that's a that like um and it I also mean, depend on the mission that dudes be on like that could maybe disrupt the mission that they out here on some Andre. A lot of them Some bitches ain't with all guys is fucking old niggas too. You know, that came the last like 10 years of bitches fuck the bros. Yeah. I have never, if I bro you, you're never fucking me. That's been my whole life. Have I ever called you my brother? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> if I bro you, it's over. Nothing. In any nigga, because this happened a couple of times, especially when I lost weight, it blew me though. Yeah. Whereas like a nigga Swarms. I consider friends like, what? Oh, I always liked you, nigga. What? I was like, who? Then you being gay. Like, I'm your brother, nigga. They like buddy love. They like uh, Professor Clump. They- <laughs> Let's get out of here. Like, this nigga always goes too far. I need a nap. Cut the cameras. Cut that out. Uh, look, he I just been- called me Professor Clump. Nah, I was re- like, it was an analogy. You feel me, right, Dre? It was analogy. a good one, but I ain't want to hear it. Well, you, I've been trying shit. to leave. Well, y'all should be yeah, happy. Yeah, I ain't this fucking is- appreciate it's an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, don't get used to it, bitches. I yeah, just drunk cappuccino. Y'all welcome. We I'm high on caffeine. Woo, woo. I, I don't want to say too much, but Charlamagne on his podcast the other day said he was going to call me to be a host up in the purpose level. He was going to rotate and host. Don't tell nobody I told y'all that. There's a lot of shit in this hour and a half, too. Bye.